r slash ask reddit what's the scummiest trick you know you can give the finger to firemen if they're on their way to a fire this is why this thread exists open a bank earn big fees and big bonuses issuing a bunch of mortgages you know can't be paid back when things start to go bad threaten congress with armageddon and receive a huge bailout pay yourself another huge bonus Finally leave just before the bank goes broke and stick the FDIC taxpayers with the resulting financial black hole. Sorry, that seems pretty far-fetched. I agree, there's no way that could work. I think you meant to say that there's no way it could fail. Lakwisha on the corner of 53rd and Roosevelt. I bet you a dollar I can make your tits move without touching them. Grab said tits. I lose. Hand over the dollar. Walk. Note, I'm not responsible for this, nor would I do it. A friend of mine met his wife this way, seriously. I think I met her like that too. If you stand outside a popular bar and charge a cover, you can usually snag about $40.50 before getting chased off. Some a-hole pulled the stunt at a local bar, took 5 bucks from me, when I wised up, I called over the bouncer and told him the guy took 10 bucks. Hey, that guy's charging 10 bucks cover, he stole my 15 bucks, seriously, if I'm paying 20 bucks to get into a club, it better be going to the club, where's the bouncer, I'm going to get my 25 bucks back. When you are the designated driver and your passengers are really really intoxicated, stop at every gas station and ask each them for money to fill up. Don't you think that a gas station is a tad public for prostitution? Strip club bait and switch. Get a small baggie. Fill one corner with any sort of white powder you may have laying around the house. Baby powder. Powdered sugar. Even flour will work in a pinch. Tie the corner of the baggie into a small knot. So it looks like an 8 ball of cocaine. Go out to the strip club. Every time you pull money out of your pocket in view of one of the girls. Make sure she sees it. Or drop it and pick it up really quick. Pretty soon you'll have a gaggle of coke horses hanging around. They'll start dropping hints. Wanting to know what you're doing later. Etc. Etc. Invite them over. When you get home. Make a big show of having lost your coke. Have a lot of booze on hand. They'll stay anyway. Shove a chunk of foam up the coin return slot of a busy vending machine. Come back a while later to collect your chunk of foam plus winnings. Ugh. Some got me with this yesterday only with gum. I fingered the hell out of that hole for 5 minutes just trying to get a quarter. That turned me on a little. I fingered the hole of the vending machine. Roughly shoving my index and middle fingers into the cold, square metal hole which was slowly warming up from my struggling. I could hear my quarters sitting just out of reach, and I fingered deeper and deeper into the machine until I found that sweet spot, the gum. I tore at the gum with my bare fingers roughly, scraping off bits and pieces until finally it came loose. The vending machine shuddered and released the load of coins, pouring out into the coin dish with a satisfying clank, and I scooped out my small fortune in quarters, at least four dollars. Walk into a bank, and ask the teller you're going to receive a lot of money in the near future, and that you may like to open up a 20,000 CD, or something involving a lot of money. Then teller will then, by policy, be forced to get a personal banker to deal with a high priority customer. When you're labeled high priority, they wave a ton of shit and treat you like royalty for a while. For example, my friend had over $400 of a bunch of overdraft fees he couldn't pay. I walked in the bank and asked the teller I'd like financial advice on $50,000 my grandpa is going to leave me. She directed me to her personal banker. I got to talking to her for a while about a bunch of financial mumbo jumbo. Letting her think she was convincing me. I then brought up the fact that my friend's personal experiences with the bank has made me question their reputation. In spite of the fact that others recommended me here, we called up my friend, cleared his fees, and I never walked in that bank again. Plasma pistol, then melee. Fox only. Final destination. Just the tip. So this guy is getting busy with a virgin and after a while of fumbling around, he tries to go in. No, she says. I'm saving myself. How about just the tip? He asks and after a much pleading. She agrees. Okay, but just the tip. Don't put in any more. He promises not to, but it feels so good and she's enjoying it. 
So he goes all the way in. The girl is moaning and yells. Oh god. Go ahead. Put it all in. The guy freezes and yells back. No. A promise is a promise. When you see a bum about to ask you for money, ask him for money first. A little gypsy kid asked my friend for some cash once. My friend said he didn't have any but wanted to buy some coffee and asked the gypsy kid for some money. Gypsy kid gave him cash. I figured out how to change the print queue at my school's library and often cancel people's print jobs to shorten the line and get my stuff printed out. In other news, your IT department sucks. Tell me about it. Anyone inclined to print a config page, grab the IP, and use the handy little web UI is free to do whatever they want. My favorite trick, not really scummy but dirty, when you are in the backseat going through driver through, wait until your buddy finishes ordering from the girl and when she says will that be all, say and a blow job, then hide so your buddy has to face her. Going through the drive through in fast food restaurants they don't put cups of water through the register, but basically ask for one. They are free. Go to the pay window next and tell them you just asked for water. When you get to the last window where you get the food, most of the time you'll get the order for the person behind you which they've paid for. Lack of communication FTW. Oh god. You're screwing over the employees, company, and customers all in one. You're a maniac. You don't even have to do this, but it needs to be a drive through that has one window to take your payment and a second one to give you your food. You can just say at the microphone thing that you forgot your wallet so you're just going to drive through. Drive up to the first window. Say you were the guy that forgot your wallet. Go up to the second window and wait. You'll be handed the food of the car behind you. Just hope they didn't order the fish fillet. In my experience if you ask smoker for a cigarette, they will most likely give you one. I knew a guy who would carry around a second pack with just one cigarette in it. Just in case anyone asked. That is one of the scummier tricks I know of. Last week while downtown DC, a bum asked me for a smoke as I was walking to get a sandwich. I told him to pick up 10 pieces of trash and meet me at a dumpster on my way back and I'd give him one. Sure enough, he picked up trash and I even gave him an extra sick. Get several flimsy paper or foam cups, super glue them to your co-worker's desk, and fill them to the brim with water. If they don't realize the cups are stuck to the table, they will just try to pick one up normally, and water will go everywhere. Then they will either try to sponge the water out of the old ones, which will make just as much mess, or just rip them all out. Another good one with cups and water, set up like 100 cups on a rumored floor and only fill up 3 or 4 in the middle with water. They will kick their way through first first few, then kick water everywhere. If you're on the road and don't want to pay out for a hotel I know that Walmart has a, an, official policy that they won't kick you out of their parking lot unless you've been squatting for something like 24 hours. They kicked some homeless kid out of their lot a few years ago and got slammed all over the news when he turned up dead. I work at Walmart and people treat the parking lot like an RV park just about every night. We can print a printers in other offices at my company. I print Google Maps of directions to gay bars from guys homes. Call Dell with an old PC on hand. Tell them it caught fire, smoked or even shocked you. They will buy you off. At the very least, they will send a brand new $5,000 system. My buddy got a home server, a system, a desk, and free software. Over 10k worth of stuff. Not that I'm advocating this. As an ex-employee, I am extremely loyal to Dell. Red Kool-Aid powder in the shower head. Your sleepy victim will frantically try to find where they are bleeding from. Crushed butterscotch lifesavers works much better. The water comes out clear and the more they wash, the more sticky the person gets. Sorry but I doubt this trick will ever work. Nobody jumps into the shower until the water gets hot. Glitter on top of a door. Fabulous. Glitter is the herpes of craft supplies. Ground up Alka Seltzer will cause a false positive for cocaine on men. A quickie test done by cops at the scene of a bust. Grind some up. While wearing gloves, place in a drug type plastic bag. Also while wearing gloves, plant in someone's car and then drop a dime on them. Mean. Nasty. And can result in incarceration of the individual you are setting up. For a less mean trick. 
Take a plastic, ziplock bag, without a slider, and place into it 2 tablespoons of sugar, 2 tablespoons of dirt, 1 stroke 4 cup of water, and a dead fish. Hide in a place it will not be discovered for a couple of weeks. Under a spare tire is great. Really awesome spot is above a suspended ceiling tile. The bag keeps the smell in initially. The dirt, water and sugar provide bacteria and a starter culture media. The fish will rapidly rot and give off gas, which will expand the bag and, eventually, pop it open, releasing the wonderful aroma of two week old rotting fish in the target area. I hate you. Go to a park and wait for a woman jogging. Leap out and deal her the biggest blow to the back of the head. Take her cash and get the hell out of there. For your information, after reading many of these comments, the things people do are extremely illegal and not really a scummy trick. If you take an extension cord and make both ends male, and plug them into sockets in different parts of the house, it can trip the entire panel. This would be on the theft side of dirty but we used to do this all the time in high school. Go to local big box store that has a customer service counter. Egg. Canadian Tire. Walmart. Home Depot. Pick up desired item and walk to the customer service counter. Ask to return this item. They will say not a problem. Can I have your receipt? Reply yes. Just let me oh you know what? I forgot it in my car. One second. And leave with the item. Also. Just found out kids at my university were picking up textbooks off the shelves and taking them to the used book buyback counter in the campus bookstore. They would get 40% of the book price back instantly, without even purchasing the book. Not scummy. Genius. When my friends and I used to get incredibly stoned and play hockey in underground parking lots at 3am, we'd be thirsty, and we'd have the munchies. Solution. Walk into 7 stroke 11. Take a double big gulp soft drink cup, pop a Ben and Jerry's ice cream in the bottom, fill the rest with Slurpee, you get a B&J ice cream, half baked brownie FTW, and a pretty big Slurpee for under $2, perfect for blunted hockey. Speaking as a former 7-Eleven manager, we always knew when you and your ilk were doing that. Corporate policy just generally prevented us from effectively preventing you. So shine on, you crazy beatniks. Sometimes things that are on clearance at one store aren't at another, and you can usually return the stuff without a receipt and profit. I only felt a little guilty ripping $40 off Walmart this way. An even scummier variant of this is to look through the trash cans by a store for thrown away receipts. Go into the store, pick up an item that's on the receipt, and return it at the customer service desk. Your scummier variant is simply theft. Dishy's trick is a little unethical, but breaks no laws. Your variant is no different than attempting to shoplift. So let's say you buy an item and it breaks, but you don't have a receipt or it's not covered under warranty. Just go buy the exact same model item, and return the old saying it broke or it was faulty or you just didn't like it. Now you have a receipt, so no hassle. If it's the same model and not something that's checked by serial no, Xboxes, that sort of thing, then boom. Brand new item. This just about always works, and I've saved this for situations where I've felt like I have gotten just about no use out of an item. Then the store will normally just send it back to manufacturer dependent upon the item. Bar trick. Take two quarters, put one under a beer bottle, and hide the other one in your hand. Tell a friend I will bet you $5 that I can get that quarter out from under the beer, without ever touching the bottle, when they accept. Take both your hands and move them around the base of the bottle mysteriously. Hover over the top for a minute before finally proclaiming BAM. You owe me $5. And showing them the quarter in your hand. Without fail, they will get a skeptical look on their face and lift up the beer bottle to check if you are lying. At which point you grab the quarter from under it and tell them now. You owe me $5. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh, it's free and that's a great price.